I'm here to talk about the life cycle of the salmon, which is a wonderful creature, and it's a creature that looks very similar to this that's in front of you here. This is a, a model of a salmon that has actually caught... There's something the fishy morning. going on at uh, Tonnerevel Primary ago, School in uh, South Wales. Officers from the Environment Agency have come here to launch the Salmon Homecoming Project, where the school children raise their own salmon from eggs in their own hatchery. This is their story. This is the little mini hatchery that we're going to set up in your school. We're going to bring some live salmon eggs down to you, and you're going to look after them and hatch them out to their alvin stage. A couple of weeks later, and the eagerly awaited eggs arrive for the hatchery, set up in the boiler room, where the temperature is perfect for raising fish. We had around 200 eggs. We each took it in turns for each day of the week to make sure the temperature was under 10 degrees Celsius. And also we had to make sure if there was any dead eggs, and if there were, we had to take them out and we had to make sure every week they had clean, fresh water. You can see one or two of them started to move there now. They're always going to be in the kitchen. In the What's, the the in the kitchen? What's the temperature now? Do you want to tell me then? You can tell me so that. You can have a look. Have a read. Is that a read? On 10. On 10, is it? 12. 12. 12. 12. <coughs> Over the next few weeks, the children keep a daily diary, noting any changes in the tank while others run a rotor for checking the temperature in the hatchery, the water quality, and looking out for any dead eggs. All right, so this is every you come in the morning and, and you were yeah. putting your name so down. Yeah, like on a Friday, it'd be Kirsty there, me. Right. Every Tuesday after. I'd be on a Wednesday, me right. and then Lucy. Right, and you were checking all these and you were yeah. recording yeah. the temperature. Look, it hasn't gone above, <coughs> above 10 degrees, or it did it there did once. Yeah, it did, and that's the one um, that yeah. Yeah. And it did good to really That well. was when they then And 15, 15, 15 Tuesday well. afternoon when I checked it. Mm. Fantastic. And and there's an egg with him, it's got a lot, bit, quite a bit of white. And this one is the bear. Nice. Three sandies, another one down below. There's one more down below as well. Not that one. Not that one. That one. The, the one over there. there. Yeah. yeah, we don't know what to do because he's half dead. Half dead. <laughs> with the eggs sinking into the stones, it's difficult to watch them hatch. And the baby arvin fish are so small, they're hardly visible burying themselves into the gravel immediately after hatching. So the school children can't get a good look at them until they're pulled out. So there you are, there they are now, look. This is dead egg now. dead egg in it. There's a few of us. There's a white one. There's still some eggs in. Can I hold it? Like you can see his eyes? Yeah. yeah. We call them black eyed peas. We call them black eyed peas. Yeah. Nice one. See the size of peas. After three weeks at the school, the hatchery is now too small for the fish. But when you think, where's going to be the best place for them now? You couldn't keep them there. They'll grow too big. So sadly for the children, the fish have to leave. They're taken to the foothills of the Brecon Beacons. Here they're reared further at the Environment Agency's own hatchery. Over the next three months, they grow, until by mid-summer, they're ready to be released into the wild. So the school children come to collect them. And out there is real life. Those salmon are out there, the salmon that were born in your school, they're actually over there waiting for you, here, for you to be picking them up and taking them back to your local river. All the ones that we recognize that we need. Oh, we know how it is. What are these called, these fish, fish, fish this size? Right, that's right. Now, what's the next stage up? Part, part. and head in here as well. Well done. We had a tour of the hatchery. We went to see the big pars. There was two tanks of them. Um, there was hundreds of them. What 
come around here, you can all see them then, look. In a few months' time, gradually towards the end of this year, those finger marks will disappear and they'll turn a bright silver colour and that means they're ready to go to sea to swim to Greenland. And we also had a chance to feed the biggest, the big salmon as well. We fed them special food for them with parts of shrimp in it. And everyone would throw pieces in and the salmon would, big salmon would come up and splash out and grab it. The fish were huge. Put them gently in now, into there, and scoop the fish up very, very gently. There you go. And into the bucket, go on. Well done, well done, excellent. That was that, there you come. There's another one. Brilliant. Those sit out to your fish. Bye. One shot on the back, now it's a big Which, which bit do you like the best, the eggs or the, when you release them to When I release them to Why is that? Because it was their home and it was fun like watching them going out. They've been in the hatchery and everything, they haven't been in a, a real river before and it was the first time they've ever gone in a real river. So that's what I like most about it. Because it's just a brilliant thing to do. It's fantastic. Just what would you like to do next? Um, write about them. And about what, what sorts of colours they are and how pretty they are. They've now got a knowledge of, of a living animal, be it the fish. They know about its life cycle, how it fits with their environment, the impact that, that they can have throughout their life on that fish and all the wildlife that's around them. So, you know, they go back to the classroom, they find out about these things, they get on the internet, and they just, you know, increase the, the knowledge they've got on these things, and it, it's really tremendous what they've done. Kids are very, very enthusiastic, and that's, that's the key to the success of this project. What we're going to do today is we're going to do some follow-up work about the visit that we took to Cunrick Fisheries Unit on Wednesday. First of all, did you all have fun there? Yes! yes. When we actually came to releasing the fish back into the River Ely, we did shed some tears, I have to be honest. And as the eggs hatched in school, there was a, a scary moment where we thought they'd all died. But actually, they had all hatched and buried themselves under the gravel, much to our relief. But the children do get emotionally involved. They take ownership of the eggs and of the project, and they've really guided their own learning. I did not want to let them go, but we did. I felt really happy for the salmon to, to be released. So I took some photographs of the salmon. I enjoyed it. It was great fun. The life cycle of the salmon. First of all, they are eggs. Then when they hatch into algae, then fry, then hot, then smoke, and finally into adult salmon. So which is south and where's west? Think about your compass points now. Uh, Southwest. Yeah, so it's sort of there, I suppose, then, isn't it? Obviously, the benefits have been seen right through the school in a number of curriculum areas, uh, in particular geography, obviously, because the children are now far more aware of where these salmon come from, where they go to, they, they actually track them. We've also seen a big impact on other subjects as well. They've been encouraged to actually research 
record the research themselves and then present information to other children. It's given them a real sense that they belong, that they've actually had these salmon from tiny little eggs, that they've been responsible for releasing them into a river. It's been marvellous, wonderful. We're um, making a paper presentation about what we've done with the Salmon Homecoming project and everything to do with us. So it's about um, delivering the eggs, taking care of the salmon and the actual Kenrig Fish Centre. What it was like there, what they do and what's happening to salmon in the world and how it's going, how the population is getting lower and lower every year. What we take away from this project is that the environment is such a wonderful, wonderful classroom. It really is about children learning in a meaningful fashion and having lots of fun. The learning runs alongside the learning that is classroom based and I think that any opportunity that comes anyone's way for this kind of adventure, um, I would say go for it with both hands. We've been working hard on the Salmon Homecoming project. As you can see, we've made a water space showing lots of our work. Lots of your work. And it's on the back in the display. And it's on the Having display. presented their project to the whole school, the Salmon Group went on to teach their classmates about what they had learned themselves. Sprite. No. no. Egg. No. no. Alvin. Alvin. Too long. And they seal it up, they put the glass thing in, they blew it up, and then they tied it up with the table. Here's the table table, the prawns now. Prawns. 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 Check prawns. 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 Two inches. Two inches are about that big. About that big. One of the things that a teacher's are always looking to do is to engage and enthuse children and to develop experiential learning and this project has been one of the best ways I can think of to do that. I mean as you can see the enthusiasm of the children is, is obvious and they've been able to understand what environmental science is all about and they've taken it on board themselves to go home, do extra research, they've come back to me with with facts and figures that I never knew existed. And they've become interested in wider issues. They read in newspapers, watching the news, things like pollution and global warming. It's been a huge impact, it really has been. Back at the river, and the school children anticipate the return of their salmon. We think they might have gone down the river really, traveling for food. Hopefully soon they'll end up going to the sea to go to America, Greenland. They've probably been feeding a while now. And then after that, they'll probably cross the Atlantic Ocean again, come back to the river really to spawn and lay eggs. You see, I'm in maybe at least a year, maybe, or maybe a bit more. Mm -hmm.